Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this update on government activities during the first three months of 2012. This report is part of my commitment to opening up government. I think it's important that you know what we've been doing and just as importantly, why we're doing it. My commitment is simple. I'm working to make life better for BC families. All kinds of families. Families as diverse as our province. We live in a great place, but we have challenges and we're working together to meet them. That's what our budget, released in February, is all about. More than any province in Canada, we are holding the line on spending and taxes. While it would be nice to spend more money on programs, the reality is that that would mean one of two things. Raising taxes or adding to the debt our children and grandchildren will have to pay off. I'm not prepared to do either. Our budget focused on strengthening the economy and creating jobs because we need to maintain our status as a safe harbour in today's chaotic global economy. And as I promote our province here and overseas, I am constantly reminded that our hard-earned reputation for fiscal prudence is one of our key advantages. It would be easier politically to give in to the pressure to tax more and spend more, but we won't do that. We won't lose our nerve in keeping taxes and spending under control. March marked the six-month point since I launched the BC Jobs Plan. There's a detailed report about what we've done so far available on the website bcjobsplan.ca. You can get the details there, but here are some of the highlights. We're ahead of target in cutting the backlog and permitting. We've invested resources to make sure that businesses get the answers that they need to create the jobs that British Columbians need. If the answer is going to be yes, let's get to that answer more quickly so that we can create the jobs more quickly too. So far we've cut the mine permitting backlog by 77%. We've also announced comprehensive plans for development in three key sectors of our economy. Natural gas, agri-foods and transportation. In the natural gas sector we're creating a whole new industry. Extracting the gas, turning it into a liquid and shipping it to fast growing markets in Asia. This is fueling a boom in northern British Columbia and creating spin-off jobs like those at Thai Crop, a business I recently visited in Chilliwack. It's also strengthening our clean tech sector in the Lower Mainland. The five-year plan for the agri-food sector is built around three goals, focusing on high-quality, high-value products, expanding markets at home and overseas, and making sure we're competitive. Farming is a big part of our economy, and it's a big part of who we are as a province. So we need to make sure that it's stronger than ever before. The transportation sector plays a vital role in our economy in two ways. First, it's a great job creator in itself. And at least as importantly, it's critical in getting BC goods to markets around the world. Our modern infrastructure is a key advantage we have in competing with the US West Coast. And we're working to build on that advantage with the transportation sector strategy. Working with the private sector will increase railway capacity and increase our port capacity in Vancouver and Prince Rupert. This will allow the ports to handle more coal, wood pellets and potash. Our plan will also improve roads like Highway 37 to improve access to mines and forestry resources. You can learn more about these initiatives and offer your ideas and input at bcjobsplan.ca. In January, I released an in-depth report about the problems at Community Living BC problems that were waiting on my desk when I became Premier over a year ago. We conducted a thorough review and are now in the process of reforming the organization so that we can make sure adults who are living with developmental disabilities are getting the services and support they need to lead positive, meaningful lives. Earlier this year, I also announced a top-to-bottom review of the justice system in British Columbia. We're spending more than ever on criminal justice and fighting crime, and I think all taxpayers have a right to know that that money is well spent. My priority is making sure prosecutions are happening as quickly as possible, and that the system is working efficiently and effectively. Despite the labor dispute with the teachers union, we continue to invest in our children and move forward with a plan to make sure our education system keeps up with today's changing world. The government is investing in new schools, such as the Chimney Hill School in Surrey, which opened new classrooms just last week. 
and I'm particularly proud of our Strong Start program, which helps children under five by offering early learning programs at no cost. It's a great way to get kids off on the right foot, and you can learn more about it at bced.gov.bc.ca. The labor situation with the teachers union is frustrating, and I want you to know our government is approaching this as something that needs to be solved reasonably and in a responsible manner. We can't let our children's education become a political football. So your government has imposed a cooling off period, and in the meantime, we're insisting that report cards get produced so parents and children can know where to focus their energy and we can make sure that every child is getting the support that they need. I think it's reasonable to ask teachers to accept a pay freeze just as all other unionized public employees have done. I'm simply not prepared to raise taxes on BC families to fund a pay hike. I've also asked MLAs and cabinet ministers to accept a pay freeze to show our commitment to keeping taxes and spending under control. I think it's the least we can do to help maintain our fiscal prudence. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this report. I hope you can also join me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. I look forward to hearing your thoughts.